basically we're going to consider what is a prophecy very briefly we're going to consider some prophecies in the bible and choosing three ones which have been fulfilled there are many and uh, we can talk about those at another stage if you so wish but tonight oh today we are going to be considering just an, a short number of them and then at the end we're going to also be considering our hope so what is a prophecy well according, according to the merriam web dictionary it, it, it puts it down as this an, an inspired utterance of a, a prophet um it, it, it's basically what the f the function or the vocation of a prophet was to declare divine will and purpose um essentially it also say it's the prediction of things to come and so when we look at prophecies in the bible there are many and there are some which are fulfilled which are during bible times and others which are fulfilled and um, more towards the latter days um and we think more towards the end times when we as christians christadelphians believe christ is coming back to the earth now some prophecies in the bible seem to have a dual application so by that we mean sometimes they seem to have an immediate or, or short term um, impact but also they also seem to have some uh, applications to a, a latter time and the bible does sometimes do this with this sort of echoing and mirroring of similar episodes um, from bible times and in future times as well so so why does it matter well we base our future hope um, on the bible uh, as christophians we believe that christ is coming back to the earth to set up a physical real everlasting kingdom on the earth and we can be part of that kingdom too if we believe and are baptized and we choose to follow what the bible commands so let's just take an example then so one of the first examples i want us to consider is the destruction of tyre and we read here it came to pass in the 11th year in the first day of the month in ezekiel 26 it says the word of the lord came unto me saying son of man because that tyrus has said against jerusalem aha she is broken that was the gates of the people she is turned unto me i shall be replenished now she is laid waste therefore thus saith the lord god behold i am against thee o tyrus and i will cause many nations to come up against thee and as the sea causeth his ways to come up and they shall destroy destroy the walls of tyrus and shall break down her towers i will also scrape her dust from her and make her like the top of a rock it shall be a place for the spreading of nets in the midst of the sea for i have spoken it saith the lord god and it shall become the spoil of the nations now you might not know much about the old city of tyre but um the bible clearly foretells the destruction of tyre here we've read it as tyrus now there was the his, in history then uh, when alexander the, the great was conquering the known world um, there was the old city of tyre which was on the coast but then there was also this island and there were there was a there was a, a stronghold out on that island holding out now we haven't got time to go through it all at the moment but what um uh, what was well known and what is uh, well documented about this is how that alexander the great scraped the ruins of the old tyre city and put them in the ocean to build a causeway out to the island. So this island's not a, a great way off, but um, in, in that day and age, if you were you know, nearly a kilometre out to sea, it, it becomes very difficult to kind of get to you um, and to fight an efficient uh, battle against them, especially for an, an, an army like the Greeks. So what Alexander did was a great feat of uh, sort of uh, civil engineering. He built a causeway out to the island and then destroyed it now that that's a fascinating fulfillment of prophecy because we read as we saw in ezekiel 26 that it was going to be destroyed breaking down their tiles scraping the dust from her and they're going to make this place a, a place for the spreading of nets and we know now that tyre really is is gone and it's destroyed we don't really read of tyre so this is more in the sort of modern day lebanon area and uh, so there, there, there's not really anything there anymore there's no great city of tyre tyre used to be a well-known trading nation and so we have a direct fulfillment of bible prophecy which has happened um against tyre so god declared this destruction against tyre and this has been fulfilled and tyre is no longer we also have the example of isaiah and cyrus the great uh, we, we read in the book of isaiah this this man cyrus isn't actually named um, it says that seth of cyrus in isaiah 44 he is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure saying to jerusalem thou shalt be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid 
Um, Cyrus, we know himself, actually worshipped pagan gods. It's funny that the Bible speaks about him here as, as, his, as God's shepherd and performing all God's pleasure because we know he was actually a heathen king who was not a believer. Uh, yet God was still able to use him to fulfil his will. And it demonstrates God's power, doesn't it? In Proverbs 21, it says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord like the rivers of water. He turns it whithersoever he will. So God is in control of using people. And he can use them as tools. And over time and over history, God has put people and figureheads in place to bring about the course of human events to lead us to uh, our current state. So it goes on in Isaiah 45. Thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, who... Uh, whose hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leaved gates and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I'll give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name and the God of Israel, for, God, for Jacob, my servant's sake and, mine, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside thee. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. So this is all talking about this situation. And God explains how Cyrus is going to be able to conquer this way. And he said, we, we, we saw those words there that of the double doors. It says, it says the two-leaved gates there. And, it, and, it, and this is seemingly to reference to the surprising way which Cyrus was able to invade the seemingly impregnable city of Babylon. So the armies of Cyrus encamped around this huge city of the Babylonians and, and they, they looked down from their tire, towering walls and they, 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 they didn't really take Cyrus that seriously. Uh, they, they laughed, really. Uh, and they said well, they, they could never take us. They were very confident, very confident in their own abilities to withstand any sort of siege. But Cyrus and his men, they carried out a remarkable action again, another engineering feat. The, the, the Euphrates, Euphrates River uh, flowed into Babylon through massive gates, and Cyrus had his men divert the course of most of the river by removing ancient dikes and, uh, and those which were there to keep it in its natural course. And he manages to get a spy into the city who had the inner gates um, along the river unlocked. And then in the earlier uh, pre-dawn hours, under the cover of darkness, the Persian forces managed to sneak in through the, 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 the riverbed, as it were. And before sunrise, the great city of Babylon's conquered. And that was all according to Bible prophecy. Now, that, that, that's fantastic, isn't it? And it's actually really fascinating because some of these sorts of conquests and these, these conquests which we read of, are contained on the Cyrus cylinder. And this cylinder is something which you can go and see now today in, in the British Museum. Um, there is the Silas, Cyrus cylinder, which has um, a lot of information about his, uh, his conquests. And, uh, you know, it is also considered the, one of the first bills of human rights. Uh, but it do documents all about the different information and what happened with these battles. And God says, um, I have raised him up in righteousness and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my city and he shall not, they shall let go my captives, nor for price nor reward, saith the Lord of hosts. Okay, and we know that's what happened. And that's what happened in, 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 in the events of uh, surrounding these invasions. Thank you.